Hello everyone. Welcome to the webinar on gRPC with WSO2 API Micro Gateway. I am Rajit Roshan, Associate Tech Lead from WSO2 and Viraj Kamage, Software Engineer from WSO2 will be hosting today's webinar. First of all, let's take a look at the discussion points of today's webinar. Initially, we will be discussing the concepts and usages of gRPC and later we will be looking at how we can use micro gateway to add additional QoS factors like authentication, authorization, rate limiting and analytics when exposing gRPC services via the gateway. Then let's see how we can expose these gRPC services as REST or JSON over HTTP to the outside world and later we can integrate those REST services with WSO2 API Manager in order to manage those APIs. Finally, we will take a look at how we can scale gRPC services with micro gateway and also the streaming capabilities of micro gateway when proxying gRPC services. So uh, what, what is gRPC? So before looking into gRPC, let's take a look at what is RPC. The RPC or remote procedure call has been there for more than decades and it has somewhat faded away after the introduction of REST or we also call it as JSON or HTTP. So basically RPC is a way of client application or client machine executing code in a remote server as if it is executing a local method on the client side. So RPC, RPC is also a request response mechanism where client request data from the server and server respond back and the communications happens using some sort of a remote method invocation. So this is kind of perfect for distributed systems where di different components can execute, execute portions of logics in a separate component over the network. And also RPC was heavily used in service oriented architecture, which was uh, kind, kind of famous until recently. So uh, SOAP was like a, a key factor in uh, service oriented architecture, but uh, SOAP is not exactly RPC, but has a variation that uses RPC. For example, if you are familiar with WSO2 products, they used a remote method invocation to call protected backend SOAP service. So, and also uh, RPC is strongly tied. That means the structure of data transferred over the network is properly defined. And client and the server use this data definition as the contract to communicate with each other. So gRPC is also a remote procedure call framework specifically designed for high performance. This is initially designed by Google for their internal usage and later introduced as an open source project with the name gRPC. And it is also an incubating project under the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Let's uh, take a look at some of the key facts of gRPC. So as I mentioned earlier, this is very high performing and highly scale scalable. There can be organizations that have a lot of little, little services that perform billions of inter-service calls per second. Typically in microservices kind of scenarios, uh, there can be high amount of RPC calls happening internally. So sending an extra byte of over the network in each RPC call can end up sending gigabytes of additional data over the network. So gRPC can be used as a high performing service to service communication mechanism. And the other important fact is the interoperability and the extensibility. Some of the RPC implementations might be coupled to implemented programming language. For example, if the server is written in Java, then clients should also use the Java to do the RPC code. So uh, there can be certain limitations. But in gRPC, we can write gRPC service in any language and implement the client side in any preferred language. For example, we can implement the service using C++ or C Sharp. And on the client side, they can use Ruby client or Java Android client and etc. So this is kind of really helpful when developing mobile applications as well. Since a gRPC is very lightweight and low resource consuming, mobile devices can directly call gRPC services 
using any of the mobile grpc clients and also grpc has an interface definition language that defines the structure of data transmitted over the network so this is some kind of a contract between the client and the service in order to understand each other's message format and also it is implemented on top of http2 protocol so it has all the advantages of http to like streaming header compression and etc so protocol buffers are a language and uh, are a language uh, and platform neutral way of serializing structured data which is used in uh, communication protocols as well as the data storage grpc uses uh, protocol buffers as its interface definition language to define the mechanism so to define the message format as well as the underlying message serialization format after defining the message format same proto file can be used to add the service service method declarations as well so in this example we have say hello as the uh, remote method and it returns a response with object type hello reply so once the proto file is ready both client and server can use this file to generate the skeleton of data access class in whatever the language they prefer so let's see why grpc has gained a lot of popularity in the developer community community REST or JSON over HTTP has been the uh, has been most adopted way how clients and services communicate with each other. So whenever services are getting exposed to the public or external developers to be used in their applications, they are exposed as REST services. So uh, basically, clients and services are playing with uh, with the HTTP verbs, uh, HTTP URLs and parameters, and the message payload which is a textual representation and it's somewhat uh, very optimal for humans since it is easily readable. So there are a few problems with this approach. Uh, one is uh, complicated transactions can be difficult to explain in restful manner. For example, like buying list of items from online shopping. So in this case, there will be like huge payload, payload parameters to map users and several set of data to be sent over a rest request. But with gRPC, we can clearly specify the business object and the business operation. And another problem is, as most of the organizations are moving towards a microservices architecture, their main services break down into smaller services that does only a specific business logic. So a single request from outside can create multiple internal service-to-service -service calls to achieve end-to-end -end business logic. So using REST for these internal service calls can be costly and may not be the optimal solution. Using a binary protocol like gRPC, which is intended to be read by a machine, can be optimal rather than a text protocol, which are intended for humans. Another advantage of uh, gRPC is that developers can implement microservices in their preferred programming language. This can be really handful when multiple developers, developer groups develop different, different microservices. So each developer group can individually work on their own microservices. And since gRPC is using HTTP2 as its underlying protocol, it can utilize all the advantages of HTTP2 when doing internal service calls to achieve better performance. So uh, this is a, a basic example of gRPC in microservices architecture, where an external consumer is placing an order via REST. So in order to complete the transaction, there can be few separate micro business logics like con contacting the payment service and updating the inventory about the purchased goods. So this internal service communication will use gRPC while external use REST to contact the order service. So up to now, we discussed the basics of gRPC and why it is widely adopted. 
Now let's take a look at how micro gateway can be used to proxy the gRPC services. The advantage of using micro gateway to proxy the gRPC is that developers can achieve QoS factors like authentication, authorization, rate limiting, analytics, and etc. So micro gateway also uses the protobuf definition as the single source of truth to contact with the client as well as the actual service. So how we achieve the authentication, authorization, and other things are by defining a set of protobuf extensions specific to WSO2 micro gateway. So there are a set of protobuf extensions to support the following uh, cases uh, to define uh, the actual backend gRPC service and also to define the authentication schema to protect the service and also define scopes if fine grained authorization is required for your gRPC service and also to define the rate limit policy for the gRPC service and its RPC methods. So a uh, micro gateway can uh, securely expose your gRPC services by defining the WSO2.security extension in the proto file of your gRPC service. So uh, we support adding multiple security schemas as well. So developers can decide what level of security is needed for their services. Uh, we support uh, JWT, uh, self-contained tokens, port to opaque tokens, API keys, and basic authentication. So for the services that are used internally by another service can be expressed with a less secure mechanism like a basic auth or API keys, but the services that are exposed to the public can be secured with an auth 2 like uh, mechanism. There can be scenarios like uh, gRPC services requiring more fine grain access based on user roles or user privileges. So these kind of requirements can be achieved by defining scopes for the respective RPC method in the protobuf definition. So here we use the WSO2.scopes extension to specify the scopes and uh, also users can uh, specify multiple scopes as well. Uh, so a user with a valid credential having one of the scopes can access that particular RPC method. There are certain scenarios in which we might have to limit uh, the number of requests coming to our gRPC service. Uh, like we need to protect our service from multiple connections from different clients or the same client. So this way we can guarantee that service does not get overloaded. Micro gateway allow defining rate limit policies for the whole service or for the particular RPC methods in the proto file. When defined in the service level, all the RPC methods in the service will collectively share the defined quota among themselves. And also we can define rate limit policy for particular RPC method as well. So that particular method will get, get that quota to itself on. In rate limiting policies, we are defining the number of requests per unit time. So in gRPC scenarios, it will be number of parallel connections or the number of parallel streams or number of RPC ports. Uh, we will be demonstrating all these capabilities later. So please stay tuned with us. So uh, let's take a look at why we need REST to gRPC con conversion. As I mentioned earlier, gRPC is widely used for service to service communication. But when exposing these gRPC services to developers or public, they would still prefer to use REST or JSON over HTTP as the protocol because uh, REST is a more human understandable text protocol. So in a Typical microservice deployment with gRPC microservices, we will definitely require some sort of an REST to gRPC conversion to convert the client sent REST request to a gRPC message that backend can 
understand. So here uh, I have extended my previous example by adding micro gateway to face the external clients in which they will connect over REST and micro gateway will do the conversion to gRPC in order to connect with the backend service. So all the communication among the services will happen in gRPC and client is still able to access the payment service using REST. So uh, one thing I want to, one fact I want to highlight is that currently micro gateway does not have the inbuilt support uh, for REST to gRPC. So we are using micro gateway interceptors to do the transformation, uh, which we will be demonstrating later as well. And we are planning to add the REST to gRPC uh, feature uh, as a first class feature to micro gateway in the upcoming release. So now we have set of gRPC services exposed as REST services to the clients. Now we can publish these REST services to WSO2 API manager, which is a leader in the market for managing REST APIs. So there will be plenty of advantages of publishing the API to the API manager, like API developers can get idea about the life cycle and other metadata about APIs using the publisher portal and also the uh, application developers can discover the APIs using the developer portal, which is a catalog for an APIs. Then they can create application and subscribe to the APIs in order to access them. And also uh, business analysts can get insights about the usage of APIs using the analytics provided by micro gateway in combination with WSO2 API and analytics. So uh, in this uh, diagram, uh, it uh, briefly explained the developer flow, how we can integrate API manager with micro gateway in order to manage the gRPC services exposed as APIs. So uh, micro gateway uh, generates an open API definition or Swagger, Swagger, which is a specification to describe the restful APIs using the proto file of the gRPC service. Then, this open API file can be used as a single source of truth to expose the gRPC as REST API via micro gateway as well as to manage via the API manager. So open API definition can be used by micro gateway toolkit to generate the micro gateway runtime exposing the REST service. And the same open API can also be used by API CTL to push it to API manager. So uh, here are a few images of how we can discover the API using uh, developer portal and view analytics when integrated with WSO2 API manage. So uh, one of the main advantages of micro gateway is its high scalability due to its uh, lightweight. And one of the problems is how we can scale gRPC when demand is high. So previously we look at how we can transform gRPC to REST using micro gateways. So uh, what if we put micro gateway and the gRPC service in a sidecar mode, so both gateway and sidecar uh, runs, both gateway and the service runs on the same port. With this way, we can scale the number of ports, uh, ports and place a load balancer in front to route the traffic to respective gateway so both service and microservice so uh, so both service and micro gateway will be scaled together finally let's discuss some of the streaming capabilities of grpc and how those scenarios are supported via the micro gateway as i mentioned earlier since grpc is on top of http2 it is enriched with complex streaming capabilities. The most basic scenario is simple or unary, which is uh, similar to request and response mechanism in HTTP. Uh, and actually, uh, it's not a proper streaming scenario uh, because client and server request and respond one after the other. Uh, 
so actually a stream is a bidirectional flow of bytes with an established connection which may carry one or more message so a uh, client side streaming is one method of streaming used in gRPC where client can send multiple messages over a single stream with server while server sends a single response message on the other hand server side streaming servers send multiple messages to the client and the client sends a single message over the stream but in bidirectional streaming both client and server sending multiple messages over the same stream which is achieved via http2 request and response multiplexing capability so micro gateway can act as a proxy to all of the above mentioned streaming scenarios now let's see how micro gateway security rate limiting works when grpc streaming is used and clients are directly using grpc to connect with the micro gateway so authentication and authorization will happen per rpc call done using a stream multiple messages or frames sent over a single rpc call will not be authenticated again the same explanation applies to rate limiting as well single rpc call within a stream will count as a one request and if the rpc call contains multiple messages or frames they would still count as a single request so uh, basically that's all the things we had to explain regarding grpc support with micro gateway i will now hand over to viraj to demonstrate the previously explained scenarios so over to you viraj uh, thank you rajit uh, so first let's take a look at uh, our grpc service uh, we are going to use throughout the session and uh, this is the one so this represents uh, order service of a retail store so in here so in here uh, the uh, profile is there and uh, in here we are uh, providing three uh, rpc methods and uh, one is for placing order and uh, so uh, the client will uh, say something like i uh, this item i need this quantity and from this this location and uh, it will uh, send a response saying that uh, your order is successful or failed something like that and uh, get item details uh, it is for uh, getting the uh, available product list from a certain store so you have to write a certain uh, store location and the uh, you will get the item details and uh, there is this uh, subscribe item details method uh, so uh, this is for so there could be cases where the client or the let's say let's say client application prefers to have a stream of item details periodically so because uh, the uh, uh something when something like uh, black friday happens there could be a fluctuation very frequently so this represents a service streaming uh, scenario and uh, so let's get back to our micro gateway stuff now for the moment uh so i'm going to first initialize the micro gateway project Okay, initialization is done. Sorry. Uh, so now you can see the project st structure once once it is initialized. So so there, there you can see the gRPC definition directory, and uh, this is where we we are going to put our grpc definitions and uh, i'm going to name it as order service okay so uh, I prepared the uh, 
migrated and variable profile here. And uh, as you can see, the, the profile remains the same, but we have introduced some uh, options, I mean extensions. And uh, in here, you can see that there is this import method. So this is where the uh, all the uh, when the extensions are declared. And uh, uh, based on importing this one, uh, this uh, profile, you can uh, impl uh, implement the stuff inside the profile so that microgate pick up pick uh, the information uh, from the proto. And in here, uh, we set uh, security as JWT production endpoints to be uh, local host uh, 5001. So this is where the uh, our, this is where our uh, server is listening, the RPC server is listening. And uh, for the, uh, so this one is, uh, so, uh, so the, the gate item, for the gate item details, we have assigned the uh, method throttle in there. Uh, so uh, to prevent the uh, backend, we're getting a high number of uh, requests. Uh, so, or rather RPC calls uh, at a certain given period of time and method scopes are provided for uh, place order to make sure uh, that everyone is not care capable of uh, doing this place ordering thing. So I'm going to copy this. And save it. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, uh, as you have seen earlier, uh, we have provided this uh, three pair means, so we have to update the policy.yaml as well in order to uh, have this throttling policy working. So I'm going to add the policy. Okay, so now I'm going to build the other micro gateway project. I'm using a Docker option because uh, I need to uh, get a Docker image as the deliverable. I'm going with the default stuff. Okay, it will take a few few seconds in order to build the uh, artifacts and the regenerate to generate the uh, Docker images. So while it is done, I'll go through the uh, our uh, gRPC server code and the client code. And uh, in the order server, the uh, method implementations are there. And in addition to that, we are listening on 5001 port, as I mentioned earlier. And when uh, it comes to uh, order client, uh, uh, so there are a few options and uh, so when we are defining the order client we have two options either we can uh, go ahead with without the token so in that case we won't be uh, adding author authorization header to the channel and uh, if you provided the string uh, token as a, a parameter so in that case we will add the authorization header to the uh, uh, to all the uh, grpc requests and via this gRPC client. I hope uh, now the Docker image thing is completed. So let's run this Docker. So I have this uh, gRPC backend service, uh, orders backend order service already deployed in uh, my setup. And I'm now going to run the micro gateway as well. Now let's check Docker logs to see whether 
is functioning correctly. Okay, we got a server up and running as expected. Uh, now we are going to uh, invoke the order client uh, from our uh, from the uh, code editor idea. And uh, so in this case, I'll uh, go through a few scenarios by modifying the main fu uh, function. And STN target URL is set to uh, localhost 9.9.0, which is the uh, micro gateway's uh, endpoint. And there is a token uh, without the scopes. I'm, uh, it is the generic token. And there is this uh, another token with the scope claim. So it has the scope is set to scope one, uh, as we mentioned in this one. The proto file. And uh, in here, uh, so I'm gonna comment out this. Uh, okay. Okay, cool. So, so first I'm going to invoke this without a token. So ideally, since we have set to, uh, uh, we have set the security scheme to be JWT, it should work without, it, it shouldn't work. So I'm going to invoke. Okay, so we got the uh, answers saying that, so the response saying that it is unauthenticated. In both the both of the cases, because we we mentioned that in the uh, service uh, the RPC uh, service protocol. Now I am going to invoke it with a generic token. So in that case, what should happen is in this one uh, this one shouldn't be uh, shouldn't allow shouldn't be allowed because we it needs to have a scope one, but this in this case it doesn't require any uh, scopes detail so it should pass okay so as expected the get details has been executed properly we got the results but in the uh, order uh, scenario we got the uh, message saying that permission denied because uh, author because of the authorization and now finally i am going to provide this token with the uh uh grpc client so let's observe the uh behavior in this case both passes because the scopes are provided uh so let's uh just do a few uh, a small demonstration on like uh how it works on the uh, streaming scenario. So as I have shown earlier, so I'll show it again. Uh, in here, we have a RPC method with uh, service streaming scenario. So I'm going to execute that one. So it is configured like for each two seconds, it will give a item detail description. And after five, it will stop. That's how it is implemented. Okay, so we've seen the service streaming scenario as it. And uh, so so next, uh, we have to uh, see whether the throttling works. Uh, I have mentioned in this one as three per minute, I declared that in the policies.yaml. Now I'm going to execute this three, four times maybe. To see the behavior when it is uh, throttled. Okay, so we got the message saying that resource exhausted. Okay, so the first demo is uh, all about this stuff. So this explains the uh, whole uh, GRPC proxy scenario. And uh, now let's get back on uh, how to convert REST to GRPC. So for that, I, I am going to uh, create another project. So 
I'm going to create another new one called REST Gateway Store. So because this is a so in here we are what we are doing is uh, serving REST clients and having a gRPC a service as a backend. So in this case, we need to have a open API definition as it is because uh, the client will be seen a REST service. And uh, so, so I'm going to add the uh, API definition. Let's say Okay, so I'm going to uh, okay. So this is the protoba file we are sorry uh, open API file we are going to use, and in this case, uh, as you can see, there is this uh, base part is defined as retail store and some dummy uh, URL because uh, rest some response may be may have a rest backend. And in this certain case, the order service should be uh, served via the via our uh, gRPC backend service. And in here, we have implemented, we have included a request interceptor, which is implemented in Java, uh, in order to uh, accomplish this task. And in here, we mentioned the uh, actual class. So I'm going to copy this all open API definition. Okay, and uh, so so once we mention this uh, interceptor, we will have to include the uh, corresponding uh, library, library, so JAR files, uh, in order to load this class. And in that case, okay. So uh, so so let's first take a look at. Uh, how the interceptor is implemented so it accepts a json payload and we're gonna fetch the uh, json payload and then within the code we are going to uh, declare our uh, grpc client inside this and i have added that as a dependency to my uh, uh, micro gateway interceptor and uh, after uh, i fetch the payload i'm gonna pass it to the uh, grpc client and get a json object response object and then I'm going to bind it to a new response object and uh, I'll be forwarding to the caller and setting after set uh, and uh, uh, the uh, return will be set to false because we need to proceed, we don't need to proceed this uh, through to the actual backend. So we all, all we need to do is connect with the actual gRPC backend and give the uh, corresponding response. And uh, so, so in so as dependence, I'll have to definitely have to add this one, this jar file, uh, and uh, and if we check this form file, I included a microgate gRPC client as a, and in a gRPC, uh, so the gRPC client jar is also needs to be uh, included, and in the meantime, so there are some dependencies required for this one as well. So it, uh, I have listed those stuff. Uh, sorry, I listed those stuff in the uh, libs directory uh, by setting uh, Maven dependency plugin. And uh, finally, I, I have to uh, put all these jars inside the uh, micro gateway lib directory. So if I show you the location, So this is the location we are. Uh, it is required to put the uh, Java files inside. So you'll get to uh, know uh, know more about the Java interceptors in the upcoming sessions. So I'm going to uh, uh, copy them all. So I'll just sort in my uh, local location. All those stuff will uh, do it quickly. 
Okay, now we can see all the dependent data located inside the uh, lib file. And now I'm going to build this one. Okay, while it takes a little time, uh, I'll. Uh, so we have to configure the uh, macro gateway runtime. So in this case, we are not going to use the Docker container. Instead of that, we are going to use the runtime distribution. And the runtime distributions, I'm going to enable analytics as we are going to uh, see the analytics details as well. So in here, we have uh, enabled this real time analytics. So that is in the runtime configuration. Okay, now the project project is then uh, artifact is generated. So there are some few stuff uh, uh, we have to do. So first we have to uh, uh, include this API inside the publisher as well because. That is where that is when the uh, analytics is capable of providing more insights about the API. So I'm going to delete this directory to be safe. So so in this case we are going to use API CTL command. I'm adding an environment and finally uh, I'll be creating uh, and then I'll be creating a, a, a retail store API uh, using API CTL which can be imported directly to API publish. Okay. That process is also completed. So finally, I'm going to move this thing to the API publisher. So you have to provide the credentials. Good. Now let's see whether this uh, I'll keep both the default tool and publisher open. Now let's see whether this uh, store API is available in the API manager. Okay, here we got it. And I'm going to publish this side. Okay, published. And I'm going to refresh. Okay, so we can see that in the store as well. And there's this default application. I'm going to uh, subscribe to that term. Okay, now subscription is done. Now let's take a token to generate to invoke the application. So I'm assigning this token value as an environment variable so still the gateway is not up and running as you can remember we, we did not we generate the gateway but we did not run it and here we are going to run the gateway okay we got the uh Log message. I 
And now I'm going to invoke this using a curl command. So as you can remember, we've configured it to uh, forward to a gRPC server. So I'm going to... Okay, so, so as you can see, we got the message saying that uh, price 30. So I requested for three items and it says price 30. Description purchase inventory data successful. So already successful. So it was handled as expected. I'm going to end up price. To make sure. Uh, yeah, so let's see how analytics looks like. Okay, now the usage is shown as three. Uh, so I'll go to this one as well. So, so you can see the API hits, all those details uh, in a graphical manner. Okay, so we are so we completed our, uh, the uh, second thing as well. So. So the same service is uh, deployed. So the, at the third uh, demonstration, so it's the same, the similar uh, gate is uh, deployed in the Kubernetes, and I've already deployed that one. Uh, so so that was generated uh, by uh, the uh, micro gateway artifacts, and then I've appended. Uh, Appended our backend as the sidecar mode, as you see seen in the slides. So, so on. Okay, there is one port running, and uh, if we say kubectl uh, log. Okay, so so it's it asks us to choose whether the RPC backend or KH. So actually, the KH is the name we've given uh, while generating the uh, Kubernetes uh, artifact. Uh, I mean, our micro gateway Kubernetes artifact. And I have assigned the HPA as well. So let's. So there's HPA, and uh, it is like uh, target is set to 501 by 600. So which means if the CPU said it is exceeded by 600, then it will uh, create another port. So so I'll show you again. Sorry. Okay, so uh, so let's uh, provide some load to this one whether uh, whether we can see whether we can uh, scale this up this uh, micro gateway so our service has to be this one because it is for service. so I'm going to use j meter to provide uh, some load. Okay, so in here, uh, okay, it is already signed. So I'm going to uh, put the uh, same payload I used uh, earlier, similar kind of payload. And uh, so let's uh, provide some load and see whether this is scales. So as you can see in the response data, we can, we have the response in that successful so let's keep I keep an eye on uh, how the kubernetes environment behaves still the one uh, 
Oke. Okay. Okay, it's increasing little by little. So to make this quick, let's add some more load. Seems like the load is getting reduced eventually. So this also coming successful. So I think you see the load should be now. So I'm gonna load gonna be enough, I think. So so let's hold on from this one because the time is limited. Uh, Rajit. Rajit, can you take, take it from here? Yeah, yeah. Yes, we are. Okay, yeah. so finally we have some. So, can you give me a Okay, so let's get back to this later. Okay, Rajit, it's up to you. Okay, uh, uh, Viraj, could you uh, like uh, share the slides? Yeah, sure, thank you. So uh, there are like a few questions, uh, like how is gRPC different than any other service mesh like of Istio? So first of all, like uh, gRPC is not a, a service mesh. Uh, uh, Istio is a service mesh that uh, allows to manage your microservices. But gRPC is like a uh, proto, uh, some sort of a message communication mechanism implemented on top of uh, HTTP2. So gRPC can be used to implement your microservices. And Istio is a management tool to manage all your uh, microservices in the service mesh and uh, and another question is is there a one micro gateway exposing each one of the grp services in other words does the architecture need micro gateway if api is behind dmc uh, yeah like in uh, from micro gateway uh, we can expose like uh, multiple grpc services in a single gateway and if the services are behind a DMC, that means like in a private network. Uh, so uh, uh, basically, uh, you will not need a micro gateway uh, <laughs> if it is protected somehow uh, coming to the uh, private network. But sometimes uh, even uh, certain organizations may require some sort of uh, security mechanism uh, for the service to service communication because uh, they don't expose a uh, service uh, like unsecured uh, unsecured uh, even the internal services so in those cases we can like put micro gateway with, as a sidecar uh, to the uh, to your uh, microservices behind the dmc or within the private network uh, does grpc another question is uh, does grpc custom header support is available in this to grpc conversion uh, 
So uh, first of all, the fact we need to highlight is that uh, this uh, gRPC to REST conversion is not uh, like a first class feature. We achieved it via uh, the feature called uh, micro gateway interceptors. So, uh, so uh, with this approach, yeah, definitely we can add custom uh, headers because we are using the uh, Java interceptors. Uh, so Viraj, uh, you can uh, add uh, if I uh, if you, if there's more to add to that particular question. Uh, yeah so so in the uh, so in the, this yeah so i'll i'll go through go to the code so to show you a sample uh, so this is the order interceptor so in this case you can simply get the requests uh, get headers saying that so the, so the headers can also be processed during the interceptor i think that answers your question Yes, yes, Virat, thank you. So uh, another question is uh, REST APIs follow open API or Swagger? Uh, gRPC, is there a standard? Is it followed? Uh, I see WSO2 specific things inside proto file. Can you please explain? So yes, like, uh, like similar to the open API, uh, gRPC uh, like use uh, the proto buffer uh, protocol uh, buffer so like it defines the messaging format so like in uh, open api it defines the interfaces of your uh, interfaces of your uh, rest apis uh, similar in grpc it defines the rpc methods and the objects uh, that uh, methods uses to uh, transfer those uh, data so we are following those uh, like those uh, specifications and standards and like uh, in order to achieve that authentication, authorization, and uh, rate limiting, so we have introduced these uh, WSO2 specific extensions to the proto file. So I think in the slides uh, we uh, showed uh, those uh, extensions, and in the demonstration also uh, Viraj uh, showed those in the proto file. Uh, and another question is, can you please show where and how you got the token please so uh, like uh, in the http to rest uh, scenario i think viraj uh, showed you uh, in the developer portal how he can like get a uh, create an application and get the token <laughs> another so, question Radhita, is uh, let me add something yeah sure uh, so i'll so show you if i have the resource uh sorry about that uh, so so it, it would be as uh, it would be simply a So all you have to do is you have to invoke the uh, uh, invoke the uh, key manager with this kind of request. So you you get so in this case I've used this uh, curl command to invoke the gateway directly and get the token. So it, the scope is set, vanity period is set, and uh, the credentials are set. I think uh, you get the clear clear answer from that. But it can you take on from yeah, yes uh, another question is where can we see the analytics of system to system communication or the grpc calls count i mean yeah uh, so like uh, we showed you analytics like after converting uh, it to the rest service so basically uh, we can like uh, visualize the uh, analytics to grpc as well but uh, the api manager uh, needs uh, some sort of a mapping uh, for those grpc uh, methods uh, in restful way so if, if you like have, uh, create an uh, like converted api on the api manager side we can show the uh, grpc calls uh, count on the analytics as well so what we need is like a rest api on the api manager side but 
still exposing uh, the service as a gRPC and uh, we can show the analytics for the gRPC uh, service to service communication as well. Another question is uh, during bidirectional streaming does the micro gateway maintain the TCP connection to the gRPC server and are all the pushbacks from the gRPC propagated to the client? Yes, uh, micro gateway uh, it's maintaining uh, the connection uh, to the server and uh, server uh, server pushbacks are propagated to the client. I think we demonstrated on this. Uh, we are demonstrated this as well. We are server is sending multiple uh, product list items. Uh, like within uh, two uh, seconds time periods. Uh, another pro uh, question is when do you plan to release the first class support for rest to gRPC? So uh, we are like hopefully uh, like uh, to, uh, like to add it to the 3.20 release. So uh, yeah, we are planning it, planning to add it to the 3.2. So next re next upcoming release will be a patch release 3.1.1 and we are planning to add this feature to 3.2. So uh, yeah, I think uh, that's uh, answer the most of the questions. So, so since uh, we are like uh, running out of time as well, so uh, like uh, Viraj, uh, can you uh, go? Uh, can you change the slide? Uh, so uh, like uh, these are like few uh, links that we wanted to highlight. So please uh, download and try out API Micro Gateway. And uh, like you can join our Slack channel. So if you have like any problem like trying out or anything you want to clarify, you can get help from our uh, developer community. So uh, you you can freely join the uh, Slack channel. And uh, this is uh, our GitHub link, uh, github.com slash wso2 slash product micro gateway. So if you like the stuff we are doing, please go and uh, start our repo as well. So and uh, finally, you can find the demo materials used by Viraj in the following link. So if you want to try out. Uh, yes, Viraj, can you change the slide? Yeah, so uh, these are like a uh, few upcoming webinars. So uh, next webinar will be like uh, deploying GraphQL services as managed APIs. So in uh, the WSO2 API manager is a far ahead in GraphQL support uh, compared to uh, other api management vendors vendors so you will be like mostly interested in this webinar and on may 12 we have like overview of api micro gateway 3.1 so in this webinar they will be explaining all the new features added in the 3.1 uh, release of micro gateway so i think uh, that's all the things uh, we have to cover today i hope uh, you had uh, you had a good session and thank you very much for joining with us.